Welcome back everybody to another lesson in C-sharp programming. In today's video, we're going to learn how to make our program make a decision based on the data it's given using if statements. In our last two lessons, every line of code that we wrote executed from top to bottom. Now with the use of if statements, our program will identify which lines of code to execute by checking if the data meets a defined condition. So let's begin. The first thing we want to learn is the structure of an if statement. We start with a new keyword, if followed by an open and close parentheses, and then open and close curly brace. Now inside the parentheses is where we're going to define our condition, or our expression. And if this condition evaluates to be true, then the lines of code that we put inside of the curly brace will execute. Next, we want to learn what makes up a condition. And to do that, let's learn about the comparison operators, or what's also called the relational operators. Now so far, we've only used two different types of operators in our lessons. We've used the assignment operator, or the equal sign, when we want to take data and assign it to a variable. And then we've also used the mathematical operators, addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication, to perform basic math. Now for the comparison operators, we have the less than symbol, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to, which we do not want to confuse this with the assignment operator, and the not equal to. All of these operators are meant to compare data from one to the other. So let's create a simple condition that compares numerical data. Let's check to see if 1 is less than 5. And if that is true, then whatever I type inside of these curly braces will execute. And we're just going to prompt our user that 1 is less than 5. And then let's not forget about our pause feature, except we're going to do something a little different this time as we're going to use the read key method as opposed to the read line method, because the read key method will allow us to press any key to continue. So let's prompt our user for that. Press any key to close the program. All right, let's see all this in action. And there you have it. Our condition checks to see if 1 is less than 5, which evaluates to true. So our prompt saying 1 is less than 5 is displayed on our screen, and then we can press any key to close the program. Now real quick, let's make the condition evaluate to false so we can see that the lines of code inside of the curly brace will not execute. We'll do this by simply changing the less than sign to the greater than sign, because we clearly understand that 1 is not greater than 5. So if I were to execute this, we will not receive our prompt. We will only be told to press any key to close the program. Now normally, a condition is not going to compare two constant values. It'll either compare a variable against a constant value or one variable against another variable. So let's change our program up a bit to where we can compare a variable up against a constant value. Let's use the grading system as an example where we want to take a grade and evaluate what letter it's equal to. So let's declare a variable called grade, ask our user to enter in a grade, and then take data in from the keyboard and assign it to our new variable. Now remember that when we take data in from the keyboard, it comes in as a type string. So we have to convert it to a double because that is the data type that we declared our variable as. Now let's change our condition to see if the grade will be an A. We do this by checking to see if grade is greater than or equal to 90, and we can prompt our user that they have scored an A. Let's see how this works. So if I enter in something greater than 90, we can see that we get the prompt that you have scored an A. And if I were to enter in anything less than 90, then we do not get that prompt at all. Now let's add another condition where we can check to see if we're going to score the letter B. To do that, we're going to introduce another new keyword, else if. This allows us to add another condition where we can check to see if the grade is going to be greater than or equal to 80. And if that is true, then we can prompt our user that they've scored a B. Let's see that work. If I enter in a grade that's greater than 90, you can see that we are prompted that would you have scored an A. But if I enter in a grade that's less than 90, but at least greater than 80, then we have scored a B. Now, if I enter in something that's less than 80, 
then we have no condition that is true, so therefore we're just prompted to close the program. What we don't want to do is simply use another if statement. Because what actually happens is, after the first condition is checked, regardless if it's true or false, the next condition will also get checked. So what do you think happens when I enter in a score of 90 and leave the code the way it is? Let's find out. When I enter a score of 90, notice how we're prompted that we have scored an A and we have scored a B. Because like I said, this condition evaluated true and this condition got checked also, which 90 is greater than or equal to 80, so we are prompted that we scored a B also. But when we use the else if, what happens is, is when the first condition is checked and it evaluates true, the else if condition will just get skipped. When the if condition evaluates false, then the else if condition will get checked to see if it's true or false. So from here, let's quickly add the other conditions for the letters C through F, where anything over a 70 will be a C, anything over a 60 will be a D, but for F, that means any other grade below a 60. And we don't actually need another condition to check that. We use another new keyword, else, which what this will do is when all of these conditions evaluate to false, then no matter what, Whatever's inside of the else curly braces will execute to where we can prompt our user that they have scored an F. Now let's test all these conditions. Starting with the grade of 90, we can see that we're prompted that we have scored an A, and because we satisfied the first if statement, all of the other else if statements and the else statement get skipped. Now let's test our next condition with a score of 80, and our if statement evaluates false. So it checks the first else if statement to check to see if the score is greater than or equal to 80, which is true. So we're prompted that we have scored a B. And lastly, let's test our remaining conditions. With a grade of 70, we are prompted that we have scored a C. And then with a grade of 60, we are prompted that we have scored a D. And then anything below 60, we will be prompted that we have scored an F. And this is where we'll end today's lesson. I hope this introduction to if statements was easy for everyone to follow. If that is true, then give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next lesson where we will cover how to code if statements to have multiple conditions using the logical operators. Take care, everybody.